It's Greg Rand again, and I'm glad you're still with me at the launch sequence of the Own America Investment Certification Program. Last time we talked about the size and nature of this massive opportunity, and today we're going to talk about something else, the real estate market itself. You've been in this business for one year, maybe five years, maybe 25 years, and I'm hoping in the next five minutes I'm going to teach you something that you've never known before and show you things you've never seen before and make an impact on you. This is the kind of course that you're going to want to take. So let's begin by talking about the housing market and is the market predictable? Now, I wouldn't sit here and tell you that it is, but let's go back and take a look at something that I think you've all lived through, right? The last 10 or 12 years in the real estate market. What you're looking at right now is the housing cycle. You've heard about the housing cycle, you've probably talked about the housing cycle, but have you ever seen a picture of it? You're looking at one right now. We began this decade in a recession. We had the tech stock bubble, we had 9-11, and then the boom began. Stock prices and real estate prices went on a precipitous rise, but then people did what people tend to do. We lost our heads. Irrational optimism took over. People got greedy. People started speculating in the stock market, speculating in the real estate market. The lenders forgot everything they knew about underwriting standards, and the market got overheated. So the stock market crashed, the banks had to get bailed out, and the real estate market corrected. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you the real estate market's predictable, but let's go back to the 1980s. There's the housing cycle of the 1980s, and there was a recession, there was a boom, stocks and real estate went crazy, people went crazy, banks went crazy, the market got overheated, we had a stock market crash, we had a bank bailout, we had a real estate market correction. History repeating itself. Now maybe that was an unusual circumstance, so let's go back even further. Here is my lifetime, 1968 to 2011, in the residential real estate market nationwide. Single family homes. Can you see the trend? Let me help. There's the trend. You see, the real estate market wants to appreciate between 3 and 4% per year, a little better than inflation. Why? Because people want to live indoors, right? And they want to live in America. So when you see the anomaly, I know you can see the anomaly. The anomaly is what happened between 2002 and 2006. That ski jump at the end of this chart, that was what didn't belong. So what happened after that was the correction. When you internalize this and you share this with people, they begin to understand that the market is stable. And when it gets unstable on the upside, it's going to correct. If it gets unstable on the downside, it's also going to correct. But this gives people comfort. So far be it for me to sit here and tell you the real estate market's predictable, but let's go back even further. 1940 to 2010, eight decades of real estate. Can you see the trend? Let me help you out. There's the trend. Real estate wants to appreciate steadily. When it goes too high, it's going to come back. Now, if somebody asked you to predict what was going to happen in 2011, 2012, what might you say given that little piece of blue that you see above the red line in 2010? Well, what I said was the market's not done correcting. Was I saying it because there's a big overhang of foreclosures and distressed properties still out there? Yes, sort of. Did I say it because we still have high unemployment? Of course. Did I say it because we're still sort of slogging our way out of this recession? Certainly. But really, it was this chart. You see, in order to grasp the real estate market trend, you have to zoom all the way out. You can't look too closely or you miss it. And there are too many people out there these days who are saying, well, February's numbers compared to January, that's nonsense. And even year over year is too close. You have to stand way back. You see the trend when you look at eight decades worth. This market wants to march along in a steady upward trajectory. If it goes too high, it's going to come back. If it goes too low, we're going to wind up overcorrecting the same way we did after the Great Depression. The Great Depression was the great overcorrection in real estate values. It set us up for eight decades of steady appreciation. And if you're going to buy into the idea that the Great Recession is similar to the Great Depression in certain ways, on the crisis side, you have to buy into the idea that it's an opportunity that's similar to the end of the Great Depression as well. My question for you is, have you seen this stuff before? Be honest with me. Here are four pieces of graphical information that help you explain what just happened how it's consistent with history and going way back to basically an entire generation or two worth of real estate values. 
Have you seen it before? And if you haven't, do you feel like you should have? Is this the kind of course that we should always have been teaching in our industry? So that we as real estate professionals can go beyond representing communities, beyond representing home ownership, and get into the realm of representing real estate as an asset. Only the most powerful wealth building asset known to mankind, that's our product. So if you feel like this is good stuff, then you're starting to see this is a course you're going to want to take. In the next video, I'm going to share with you the five principles of real estate wealth. So stay tuned. And I want to ask you this. How would you use this information? Okay, can you see this being valuable in trying to persuade a buyer who is ready and able to buy but not willing because they watched TV last night and got all freaked out again? Could you see this being valuable in talking to a regular home seller who is convinced the market's going to bounce back tomorrow and won't lower their price? Showing them the market's going to stabilize but it's not going to bounce, would that be helpful to you? How about in your social media? Are you like so many other people that struggle to find a way to be relevant to social media? My Twitter following went from 75 people to 18,000 people in six months because I shared information like this. How would you use this information in your business? Post a comment below. Stay tuned because the next video is going to be all about the five principles of real estate wealth and you're going to love it. If you've been looking for something to take your career to the next level this year, to help you make more money this year, to get you doing something different right away that can make an impact on your business right away, you found one. So stay with us. Thanks for watching.